Red meat and processed meat are back in the crosshairs, this time in a new study trying to correlate blood test or metabolomic testing for red meat intake and correlating that to health outcomes. And what, what did they find? Again, very thin, razor thin margins of, of increased risk that when you then control for other lifestyle factors, completely disappear. So overall, no real significant increased risk to those who ate more red meat. But as with any of these studies, we kind of have to get into the details because there are lots of nuances. So let's talk about this. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this particular study is called Biomarker Calibrated Red and Combined Red and Processed Meat Intakes with Chronic Disease Risk in a Cohort of Postmenopausal Women, published in the Journal of Nutrition. Now, this was an interesting study for a couple of reasons. One, because they sort of, they were kind of um, developing this new system of detecting how much meat you ate, not by food frequency questionnaires, but by what your blood tests, your, what they're calling your met metabolomics, um, testing shows for basically um, evidence of meat intake. So that in itself is very interesting because one of the big problems of studies like this, where you just go back and look at data that's already been um, taken and there was no intervention, it's just an observational study and people fill out food frequency questionnaires that are pretty unreliable um, and n very poor data input. Um, but this is a much higher level. If you can actually correlate um, blood tests, um, metabolomic tests that strictly correlate with uh, red meat intake, now you have a much more objective measurement um, of what someone's eating. So still not 100%, but that's what part of this study was, was sort of validating this, this, um, this way of testing for red meat, meat intake. But then like any of these studies, they took the next step and said, okay, does it correlate with uh, health outcomes. And like a lot of observational studies, they found very, very small increased hazard ratio with a hazard ratio of 1.1 for a 40% increase above the median of red meat. So 1.1 um, hazard ratio for coronary heart disease, 1.26 for heart failure, 1.1 for breast cancer, uh, 1.07 for all invasive cancers, and 1.37 for diabetes. And when they combined red plus processed meat, it was it was similar. So that's not uncommon for us to see that because there's such a healthy user bias or unhealthy user bias, depending on how you look at it, in almost all of these studies. So you're supposed to try and control for that. So when they did control, um, run it through uh, a, you know, a new algorithm, basically trying to control for caloric intake, because those who ate red meat ate more calories. They were also you know, overweight at baseline. They had different baseline characteristics. So when they ran it through a different um, assessment, all of those associations went away and the hazard ratios were null, as they said it, or, or crossed one. So they were not significant. So how do you interpret this? Well, some people are going to jump on it and say, well, look, there was an increased risk. See, um, and before they had to do all the controls that probably don't mean much, there was an increased risk. Or you say, yeah, there was increased risk, but it was so tiny that once you try to control for things, all those risks went away. Now, controlling for those things are not perfect. You have to admit that it's, it's a best guess and it's a mathematical equation and an algorithm that does it. Um, but you know, that's the best you can do with this type of data. And that's why this data is certainly lower quality, no matter whether it agrees with what, what you believe or doesn't agree with what you believe, it's still lower quality data. So this, you know, uh, it fits my bias that there's no increased risk when you control for the confounding variables, because I feel that those confounding var variables are so important. But even before you control for them, the risk is so, in is so incrementally small um, that it really makes you wonder what does it mean clinically for the individual. So uh, basically another study suggesting that um, there's likely no significant increased risk from red meat intake. Oh, and I should say this is mo this is in postmenopausal women, basically. It's from the Women's Health Initiative. So it was all women um, and without real baseline comorbidities when they were enrolled. So um, it was a certain subset of population. So that's important. Um, but will the metabolomic um, measurements help in further studies? Well, it may help. So we don't rely as much on food frequency questionnaires, but it's probably still not going to get around this healthy user bias and these confounding variables, as this study showed, um, that that basically wiped out um, any increased risk once that was accounted for. So we have so much more information at dietdoctor.com, um, a whole evidence-based educational guide on red meat that goes through all the data. We'll certainly add this study to all the other studies that we reference in that. So if you're interested in finding out more about our take on red meat and then what the evidence shows, I recommend you start there. 
But I hope this was helpful. If it was, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here on Die Talking News on YouTube. Take care, everybody.